Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Ahmed Mauer, aka Mr. Middlepath, and I'm going to talk a little bit about weed use and its effect on people and really why do people say it's a good thing, what happens when someone gets high and why they should quit. In this video, this will be personal observations, okay? So, weed is a very insidious drug, okay? So look up that word. Insidious means harming someone or harm, something harmful in a gradual and subtle way that is not noticeable, right? And that's, that's like, I'm gonna put a little thing on the bottom here so you can read what insidious means because it's so important because of, out of all the words I've come across, insidious is the best way to describe weed. It's the best adjective I can use for weed. Weed is the most deceptive drug I have ever seen, ever. And it's interesting because if someone drinks too much alcohol, what happens? They throw up, they puke their guts out the next day. If someone smokes too much weed, he has a bad high, but it's not going to be the same as, you know, other drugs, right? The, the, the withdrawal symptoms are not going to be so bad, so hard that you, you know you have a problem, right? With weed, the most common thing I hear is, oh, I'm not addicted. I can quit whenever I want. Then why don't you quit? Oh, because I don't want to right and I have seen people quit for a month or two months or three months and then they're saying oh my god you know this is the best thing that's ever happened in my life um, I'm, I'm thinking faster I'm more sociable I'm more focused in my life I'm not kind of slow and they'll praise it but then when they relapse and they start getting high again it's almost like the weed binded with the person's personality it's different than other drugs weed changes the person's identity and and this is the quality or the main factor of psychedelic drugs and i'm going to go to the definition of psychedelic drugs but what i want to say is that that person when they relapse they'll be like oh there's nothing wrong with it it's completely fine so what it doesn't it doesn't get in my way it's only a little bit right and psychedelic drugs mean mind manifestors right so psyche meaning mind adelic uh the definition was manifesting but mind altering drugs essentially and what it does is it alters your perception of reality and alters your, your your perception of reality which comes from your identity so it changes your identity these are identity changing drugs and people say that that's a good thing right so there's a lot of you know in old pagan shaman practices where they would worship animal spirits and stuff a lot of these tribes would use certain practices and amongst those certain practices was eating psychedelic uh, or mind altering substances whatever was available in their natural environment it could be weed could be weed could be um shrooms it could be some form of nuts that have lsd type material in it could be some form of cactus could be whatever it is but and there are cactuses that that get you high really high so anyways guys in the past weed was considered a mild sedative now because of how much it's been you know bred to have more and more to be more and more potent it's classed as a psychedelic drug a mild psychedelic drug not on the level of mushrooms or LSD, but it still uh, has psychedelic and mind-altering effects. But before I say that, even in the past when it was considered a mild sedative, people were still extracting hash into potions and elixirs and drinking it to get really high and, and certain orders and certain uh, religious sects were doing it, right? So the argument being is that psychedelic drugs, whatever it could be, and weed is one of them, uh, is used to enhance your spirituality and get you closer to God. This is the argument that certain people use. And you see it that if someone, you know, if someone's smoking weed a lot and perhaps they come from a background, any religious background, Muslim, Christian, Jew, you know, Hindu, whatever, right? Whatever background they're coming from. Now, if they're coming from a background where they don't believe really out of their own free will or they're just, you know, doing it because their parents made them you know do it that's what they grew up doing when they smoke weed what happens is you, you self you become more self-reflective right so you become reflective and then you realize oh wait 
I don't really believe in these things. I just do it because my parents want me to do it. And then they le end up leaving the religion. This happens a lot with people who, who smoke hash. Also, hash and psychedelic drugs can make someone, can make someone analyze their life in a way they might not have done it before. So in this sense, people who smoke weed think it's a very positive thing. Here's the thing though, you do not need hash, LSD, mushrooms, you know, whatever, whatever you whatever drug to give yourself a different perspective on life. Different perspective on, different perspectives on life come from experience, full stop, any experience. And that could be being cheated in the marketplace, being betrayed by a friend, making a new friend and having someone help you who you never met. You'll be like, oh wait, someone helped me and he never met me and there's good people in this world. Someone backstabbed me and he was my friend. Wait, maybe I should be more careful. You know, experiences in general, even picking up a book on philosophy and looking at how these people argued about the world around them, these types of things can have a mind altering effect on you, can have an identity changing effect on you without without the c catastrophic negative consequences that come from the weed use and the psychedelic drug use and i'm going to get to that uh, later but what i'm trying to say is that people use this as an excuse right like oh it's good for me and it's it's really it's really not it's un it's an unnecessary component for your spiritual growth now some people say it's good for spiritual growth i find that psychedelic drugs mimic right they it's you know those you know you know have you ever seen those nature documentaries those bugs that like it'll copy another bug like it'll look like another bug or it'll look like another animal so that it can trap it can trap so like you have a certain type of bug that looks like an ant but it's not an ant so it, 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 it like it talks with the other ants and he moves their antenna around, you know, and then it goes into the ants nest and it starts eating their babies, right? And starts eating their eggs. And that's a very good description of psychedelic drugs and weed use and, and these types of, of drugs. It mimics the effect of spiritual growth. It makes you feel like you are being sp growing spiritually, but in reality, it's like that bug is just eating you on the inside. And it's, it looks like a, a normal ant and it goes into the ant nest and then it starts stealing the eggs and eating the, the, the little babies and the ants don't know anything, right? I'm just giving you a nature example. That would be the natural effect of, of the psychedelic drugs, right? It changes your identity and it binds to your identity. It makes you think that it is part of your identity and that it's a good thing to do, right? I'm, I'm strictly talking about the people who say that it's good for your spiritual growth, right? And it is important to know that Muslim scholars saw other like there were certain sects within Islam that use drugs to get to the next level basically copying Hindus and Buddhists right not Buddhists but certain Hindu groups did the same thing too this was when Islamic Empire was expanding really wide out and they started absorbing a lot of um, cultural influences from the different cultures that they conquered faster than the religious scholars and the scientists could process what was going on and th those people were kind of catching up to the developments that was happening amongst the people but the scholars basically said you know this is a perversion this is not the way you get closer to Allah really we follow Prophet Muhammad and this is not something that was legislated and this was not something that was precedented in the religion to use mind-altering substances to get to the next level really really mentorship and life experience even even bad life experience so even so people can ask okay you're saying all this good stuff why then did it help me and then they'll they'll list life experience x and they say if it wasn't for the fact that i smoked weed or i, or I did this drug i wouldn't have had this experience that genuinely helped my life and the thing is you have to understand is that any experience good or bad Sin or not sin, and if we're looking at an Islamic, whether you're religious or not, from an Islamic point of view, uh, something haram is something that gives you, that you get a sin for it, something halal is something that you get a good deed for it, right? But what I'm trying to say is that, and then you have in between mustahab, which is liked, meaning you don't get a sin for it if you don't do it, but it's, 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 it's liked, and then uh, mung, um, makruh, which means disliked, but you won't get a sin for it, and, and then in the middle, completely neutral, um, mubah and then other but some legal schools didn't put mubah in there like neutral they didn't think think it was that but they categorized actions into four different levels or stages but 
man, I completely lost my train of thought going into that. But essentially, guys, oh yeah, why do, why do people when they do this, uh, they had an actual life experience? Is because good or bad life experience. Like someone can be drinking, right? Drinking alcohol, and then when they quit drinking, they'll be like, oh my god, I learned so. Like I'm so glad that I quit drinking, but I learned so much from what I went through when I was drinking, what not to do, about human relationships, about friends that weren't good for me, about this, about that. And weed and other drugs are the same way. When you're in the hole of smoking weed and doing drugs, you're not really gonna learn too much. You're not really gonna benefit, right? You think you might, but it's only when you quit these drugs and you get out of it and you look back at the hole, you're like, oh my God, I was in a hole you learn so much from that experience, right? And it's not just weed. It's not just drugs. It's not just alcohol. It's not just, um, from an Islamic point of view, sins, right? It's not just these things. It's really any life experience, having a bad friend, being hustled in the marketplace, being tricked by someone that you trust. All of these things, after they're done, and you look back at them, you're like, wow, this was a source of some very important wisdom and life experience, right? Sins can be a source of life experience, of course, especially after you leave them behind and you repent from them because you have a clearer mind and you're able to judge them with on a more neutral and unbiased level. But when you're stuck doing them, it's very hard to step outside that hole and look at what's going on, look at and look at how wrong the action is. So that's that's what I that's the main counter argument to people who say, oh, I do weed because it helps me get closer to God. It, you, you, th you might think that, but quit it for three to six months and see and, and develop a natural relationship, right? I'm going to go to part two. Stay tuned. I'm, I'm going to continue this conversation.